What's up, YouTube? The summer's winding down. It's August now, and for a lot of you, that means back to school. So this month, for my sewing videos, I'm going to do all back to school projects. Today, I'll be showing you how to make drawstring backpacks. These are great to use as a gym bag, an overnight bag, or just a school bag. So the things that you're going to need to make this drawstring backpack are two pieces of fabric that measure 16 inches by 19 inches. Now I'm going to be making these for a couple little boys, so I have this Batman print and also a Spider-Man print right over there. Now I'll be using this cotton here, but you could go ahead and use a thicker canvas material or even denim. You're also going to need two pieces of fusible interfacing. I believe this is a mid-weight Pellon, and these measure 16 inches by 16 inches square. Now I'll be using this to stabilize this cotton here just to make it a little sturdier. But if you're using a denim or a thicker material, you do not need to use the interfacing. And if you'd like to use the same medium weight that I have, it's Pellon 950F. You're also going to need two pieces of fabric that measure 4 inches by 3 inches. These are going to be the loops to our backpack. Now finally, you're going to need two pieces of rope. This is quarter inch clothesline material. I got a spool of it at Walmart. And you need two pieces that measure 68 inches long. You're also going to need your iron and ironing board, sewing machine with matching thread, and today I'll be using my serger also. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and get one piece of your 16 by 19 inch fabric. I laid it so the pretty side is facing down. I'm going to take one of my pieces of Pellon here, and I'm going to line it up at the bottom edge here. You should have a three inch gap here where there's not going to be any Pellon, and that's going to be the casing for our strings here. So now I'm just going to iron this down per the manufacturer's instructions. So for this specific Pellon, it says to go ahead and use a pressing cloth, which I like to do anyway because it gets gunky on your iron if you don't. And you're going to want to press this down without moving it for 15 seconds. So I'm just going to start right down here at the corner, count to 15. After 15 seconds, I'm going to pick up my iron and move it down a little bit. And you want to do that until this whole piece of Pellon is secure to your fabric. And you want to do that for both pieces of your 19 by 16 inch fabrics. Alright guys, so I have my Pellon ironed on to both of my fabrics here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my serger. And I'm going to serge this top edge just to keep it from fraying. Now if you don't have a serger, you can go ahead and just use a zigzag stitch to go all the way down, or just use some pinking shears. Alright guys, it should look just like that. And you want to do that to both of your fabrics. Alright guys, I have the top edges here all surged. So now I'm just going to fold this down a half an inch. And to do that, I'm going to use my little seam ruler here. Just like that. And give it a good press. And I'm going to do that to both of my fabrics. Alright guys, so now that this is all pressed down a half inch, I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine, and using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm just going to sew this little seam down. Alright guys, and it should look something like this. Alright guys, so our next step is we're going to get our ruler here, and on the top edge of our Pellon, I'm going to measure in one inch. And with a pencil here, I'm just going to make a mark. Just like that. And you want to do that to both sides. Now I'm just going to take some fabric scissors here and I'm going to cut right on that line. Making sure you only go an inch. Now you just want to fold your fabric over that one inch and give it a press. Now we're just going to open this back up and we're going to align our raw edge with that crease right there. Just like that. Fold it over one more time and give it a press. 
Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to fold this over that one inch, press it. Now we're just going to open it back up and line up this raw edge with that crease, just like that, and fold it over and give it a press. Now eventually this will become the casing for our drawstring bags. And if you do it this way, we won't have any raw edges. So now I'm just going to take this back over to my sewing machine and I'm going to start right here at the top and I'm going to top stitch all the way down, making sure I back stitch at the beginning and the end. But you just want to stop right here and back stitch before you hit your pelon. All right guys, so like I said, I'll be using about an eighth inch seam allowance. I'll be using a straight stitch, and my width is at zero, of course, and my length is a two. So I'm going to go ahead and back stitch. And then just keep sewing. Now, when I get down to my pedal on here, I'm going to come right up to it. It's okay if you take a stitch or two onto the pedal on and then back stitch. Just like that. Now you want to go ahead and do that to the other side also. All right, now that I have these sewed down, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to fold the casing over. I'm going to line it up with just the edge of the pelon here. Just like that. And give it a press. All right, guys, now I'm going to take this back to my sewing machine, and using that same 8-inch seam allowance, I'm going to go ahead and backstitch at the beginning and the end, and I'm going to sew this little casing flap down. Now, because I already have a quarter-inch seam allowance right here, it'll just be right between the edge of the fabric and that seam. All right, guys, so I'm over here at my sewing machine, and like I said, I will be using an 8-inch seam allowance again. I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and the end, Now just sew your casing down. And now you should have two pieces that look just like this. Now we're just going to set this off to the side for just one minute. And you want to grab your 3 inch by 4 inch pieces of fabric and now we're just going to make our loops. So to do that we're going to fold this in half the long ways and give it a press. Now we're just going to open this up and I'm going to fold this raw edge into that crease. And give it a press. Now just repeat with the second side. Now we're just going to fold it again on the original crease and give it a press. Now you want to do that to both of your four by three inch pieces of fabric. And now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm just going to sew right here about an eighth of an inch to close this loop up. Now just to make it a little more symmetrical I'm going to go ahead and do that to both sides. Alright guys so now using that same eighth inch seam allowance I'm just going to sew my loop down. Now you could back stitch here at the beginning and the end but this is going to get enclosed in another seam so it's really not that necessary. Just like that, and like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and run another seam down on the other side just to make it a little more symmetrical. This part is optional.
Alright guys, so now we just want to find the middle of this loop. And to do that, I just fold it in half and kind of give it a finger press. So now we just want to take one end of our loop here and I'm going to fold it just like that so that this side matches up with that crease. It should make a little triangle there. Next, I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. I'm just going to fold this over, try to match up your bottoms, just like that, and give it a press. So now you should have a loop that looks just like this. And as always, you want to do that to both of your loops. All right guys, so now you should have two pieces of fabric just like this and your two loops. I just went ahead and stuck a clip in there just to keep them in shape. So now you just want to lay one of your pieces of fabric right sides up and we're going to lay our other one right sides down. Now the important part is you want to get this top casing lined up. If your bottom is a little off down here, we can go ahead and fix that when we sew it together. So that looks good to me. Now I'm just going to go ahead and throw a few clips here at the top. You can also just use pins, of course. Alright guys, so now I'm just going to come down here at the bottom. I'm going to open up my bag here. And I'm going to measure up one inch, which happens to be right here, and I'm going to place my loop. Just like that. And I like to make it hang over just about an eighth of an inch, that way I know I'm going to catch it in my seam. I'm going to go ahead and lay this flat. I can take out my clip now. And then go ahead and reclip it into place. Just like that. Now I'm going to do that to both sides here, and you want to make sure that your loops are facing the same direction. I know that my little crease here is facing up, so I want this one to face up also. Now I'm just going to take a ruler here, and I'm going to draw a pencil mark from the edge of my casing here, diagonal down to this corner. Now if your clip gets in the way, you can also remove it. Now I'm just going to reclip my loop into place. And I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and using a straight stitch, I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end here, and I'm going to sew right down that line. Alright guys, so it should look like this. Now I went ahead and I back stitched a three or four times up here at the top because that is a stress point. And also where our loops are, I went ahead and sewed over that backstitched over them and kept on going. I also left a good quarter inch seam right here at the very end so it didn't go all the way down to the corner. And the only reason why I did that is because the next step I'm going to do is take this over to my serger and I'm going to serge this extra fabric just so it looks pretty. Now if you don't have a serger you can go ahead and cut any of this extra fabric here on the side off leaving a quarter inch seam allowance and then go ahead and use a zigzag stitch you want to zig on the fabric and zag just off of it, and that'll enclose this seam to keep it from fraying. Or you could just use your pinking shears if that's what you have. So like I said, now I'm going to take this over to my serger, and I'm going to serge this seam. Alright guys, so I'm over here at my serger. Now you probably can't see it, but my serger has two little lines here right on the foot. So I'm going to match up my seam line with the line right here closest to my right. and just surge. Now I'm just going to do that to both sides. Alright guys, so we have our sides here all finished and surged and they're looking great. Now I'm just going to go ahead and using a quarter to even a half inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew right across the bottom and then I'm also going to surge it when I'm done sewing it. Alright guys, so I have my bottom all sewed and surged, and I also backstitch at the beginning and the end here. I clipped my threads, and if you want to, you can go ahead and put a little fray check on the corners here and up here at the top, but I don't think it's really all that necessary. This is the inside of the bag. 
Now we just want to open this up and turn it right side out. And it's always a good idea to use a bone folder to poke out the corners. You want to make them nice and sharp. And at this point, I like to just go ahead and give it a nice press. All right, guys, and as you can see, our drawstring bag is coming along. Now it's just time to add the drawstring. So to do that, you just want to grab one of your 68-inch long pieces of rope here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick a safety pin, being careful not to go in my finger, on the end. And now I'm going to start at one end and I'm going to feed my string all the way through. Now the easiest way to do that is just hold your pin with one finger and push the fabric onto the pin. Then grab your pin and pull the fabric through. All right, so you can see I went through one of the casings. Now I'm just gonna turn this around and go through the other one. Just like that. Now you can go ahead and remove your safety pin. So now I'm just going to take my rope and I'm going to stick it through the loop. Just like that. Find my other end and tie it in a knot. Now I like to go ahead and trim off any of the fuzzy pieces. And I'm going to take this fabric fusion, you could also probably use fray check, and I'm going to dab the glue on the end of the ropes to keep them from fraying. So as you can see, I just put a little blob there, take my fingers, and just work it in. Now I'm just going to come back, trim off any little fuzzies, and let that dry. If I need to, I can go ahead and just add a little bit more glue. So now I'm just going to take my other piece of rope and my safety pin, and I'm going to do the same thing. Now since we started on this side, for this rope, I'm going to start on the opposite side. And just thread it through. So now I'm just going to thread it through my loop, and since my back string came through the back of the loop, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And now our drawstring backpack is complete. Now if you do have a smaller child, you could go ahead and adjust the length to their liking and then tie it off and cut off any extra. Now just to use this bag, fill it with your goodies and give it a cinch. Throw it on your back and away you go. Now like I said, this would make a perfect gift as a gym bag, a carry-on bag, a beach bag, or a school bag. I think even a teenager would love to get one of these. Now I hope you give this project a try. If you like this project and want to see more of my projects, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share this video across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching, happy back to school, and I'll see you next time.